I, I may be too patriotic, I don't know. I just get emotional when it comes to my country, what's happening to it. The force is trying to destroy it. And I wish God's people would really get disturbed about it. Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles this morning and open them up to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Israel is about to go into the promised land. And before they crossed over, Moses taught them, preached to them, instructed them, and warned them about many things. In this passage of Scripture, they are, again, getting ready to go in and conquer the land that God had given them. I may say some things this morning that will get us sold off of the Internet, but that's okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm not going to let that thing restrict. That, that's not going to restrict what I preach. Can I have an Amen. Amen. And the promised land belongs to Israel. Let me just say that right now. God gave it to them. It's theirs. And they have a right to it. Amen. So here's what Moses was saying to them just before they were getting ready to go in. Look what he says in verse 7. For what nation is there so great? Who hath God so nigh unto them? As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that hath statues and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you? Moses was saying unto them, you're going in and you're going to establish a nation. And it's going, not going to be another nation like it. It's going to be a great nation. Populated by a great people. Because they were serving a great God. Amen. Amen. But notice then what he says in verse 9. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thine heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Moses said, you're going to be a great nation. You have a great God that's going to bless you and watch over you and protect you. But when you get into the land, don't forget what God's done for you. I don't know about you, but every time I read this passage of Scripture, I see America described to a T. Discounting Israel, I think I can say without apology this morning, America has been the greatest nation on earth. Amen. But God warned Israel, I want to read it again. Take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, verse 9. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy, uh, teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. The reason we're in the mess we're in this morning in America is 
we have done exactly what Moses warned Israel about. We have forgotten. We not only have forgotten what a great country we are, we not only have forgotten what a great God we serve, but I believe this, we've forgotten to pass on to the next generation what God would have us to pass on. Amen. Amen. So I want to begin this morning by saying these words. I am an American. I love America. And I thank God each day that I was born in America. And on this day that our nation is set aside as a, a national day of the year, whereby we stop and pay homage and tribute and honor to those who sacrificed their lives to give us the privilege of being here this morning, I want to express to them, first of all, this morning, my deepest gratitude and appreciation. I don't know about you this morning, but I thank God somebody was willing to do, go and do and die that I might have what I have today. Amen. I cannot personally thank those that have already given their lives. But we've got young men and women right now this moment who are serving our country. And they also, if the call were to come, they would give their lives as well. Amen. And I want to thank them for that. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God this morning for all of the unsung heroes who not only have lived but are now living. Who are willing to serve us. And to do their best to preserve our great nation. And may I say this this morning. In spite of all that's been said. In spite of all that's been done. And in spite of all that, uh, uh, the, uh, that's been tried. I want to go publicly to say this morning. In spite of it all, America is still a Christian nation. Amen. I want to hear some amens. And America was founded upon biblical principles. Amen. And it is for those basic Biblical principles that these heroes have been willing to set, lay down their life for those principles. They have been willing to fight and to die for. Amen. And so I'm telling my message this morning. If it's not worth fighting for, it's not worth dying for. Amen. I announced that Wednesday night. If it's not worth fighting for, it's not worth dying for. You see, in order for someone to be willing to go out and sacrifice their life and lay it on the uh, line... Shed their blood. They must be convinced. The fight is worth it. Amen. That's just logic. Just logic. Israel in possessing the land. Of which Moses was speaking of here. Before they. Listen you know the Bible same as I do. Before they conquered that land. They had to fight many battles. 
You can read it if you've got your Bible. And then not, not only that, after they took possession of the land, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, Chronicles, not only did they have to fight for to get the land, but they had to fight to keep the land. All of their battles is recorded in the Word of God in order that they might enjoy the land that God had given them. Hear me, church, they had to fight for it. Amen. Not only did they have to fight for it, but they had to die for it as well. And so I say again, if it's not worth fighting for, it's not worth dying for. Israel has a great heritage and a great history. But I can again say I have never read these verses of Scripture, but what it does not come to my mind how they correspond to America's great heritage and America's great history. From the American Revolutionary War in 1775 to this present day, we have had to fight for what we believe and for the freedoms we have. And each, in fact, I jotted down here, America has engaged in five major wars costing thousands of lives from that revolutionary war, or you might call the War of Independence. And each one in all those wars were willing to lay down their life and willing to die. Why? Because they thought America was worth dying for. But something's happened to us, hasn't it? Let's be honest this morning. There are many today who, instead of being willing to fight, much less die for America, they're doing everything in their power to destroy both our heritage and our history. That's right. And they're attempting to change America today from a constitutional democracy to a social communist government. And thus this morning I will say to you, right now, we're fighting another war. Oh, listen, it's not a war of guns. It's not a war of bombs, not a war of airplanes right now, but it's a war of culture. It's a spiritual war that demand that some are determined, right as I stand this morning, they're determined to destroy everything we believe in. How do you know that, preacher? Well, you'll find. Got your Bibles? Let's let God speak. Go to the book of Ephesians, if you will. Paul wrote in the book of Ephesians, this is, where, this is what was going to happen. That there is a war going on. It's a spiritual war, I understand that. But it's just as real as if we were fi fighting in the trenches somewhere. Here's what Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> Verse 10. We'll start there. 
Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We're not adorning a military uniform this morning. But look what it says. For we wrestle, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not in an actual conflict right now. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. All church, let me say to you this morning, this war is going on at this moment. Our government has been infiltrated by all manner of wickedness and ungodliness and unrighteousness. And it seems like this morning so few care enough to fight for it. I'm convinced this morning there are four major things that are worth fighting for as Americans, as Christians, as a church. And yes, worth dying for if need be. And it might come to that. It might. But I, for one, as an American, I'm going to stand and fight against these four things as long as I have breath in my body. These four things are being attacked. We're in a spiritual battle. And if we lose any of these four things, we're going to lose this war, sure as I'm standing here and you're sitting there. I believe they're worth fighting for. Amen. I do. What are they, preacher? Number one. Got your Bibles? I hope. I believe, first of all, this morning, we've been talking about it. But for the sake of the message, to get a little more in depth, I believe, first of all, this morning, our freedoms are worth fighting for. Can I have an amen? I would say to anyone, everywhere, even here in this church, if you don't believe that, we'll do our best to buy you a ticket and send you somewhere where you need to go. You see, this thing, freedom, is the one thing on which our entire nation was built. Am I right, Brother John? Liberty and freedom. And they had to be one at an extreme cost. Thank God, again, somebody was willing to fight for our freedoms. Amen. Thank God for that. But today, these freedoms that somebody died for, <laughs> these, hear me, these freedoms are slowly, slowly being taken away from us. Oh, they're not doing it with the bombs. They're not doing it with the guns. They're not doing it with the airplanes. How are they doing it, preacher? They're doing it 
by passing laws and legislation that slowly take away every freedom we have. And it seems again that no one, very few, are concerned enough to get in the fight to defend it. Every, listen to me, every inch of freedom that you surrender brings us closer to a police state. And what does that do? That brings us closer to a Tortarian di dictatorship. Yeah. Think about it. And what does that do? That will ultimately bring us to slavery. And nowhere has this been more evident. Now I'm going to get down where the rubber hits the road. Nowhere has this been more evident than in, in, than in this present so-called crisis. The coronavirus that we're now in. For a group of government officials all across this land from mayors to the governors or whatever it might be were able to shut down and paralyze a whole nation. I don't know about you this morning, bless God, but that scares me. Oh, the virus scares me. I'm not... I've said this, in case somebody's listening in and never heard it before, I believe it's real. I believe it's dangerous. I believe it's deadly. But I'll tell you one thing, I fear more than that. I fear what they've done with it to scare people. That's what bothers me. Oh, listen this morning, how easy it is to take control of people's lives and throw their constitutional rights in the garbage pan. How easy thousands upon thousands were so willing they almost ran to give up their freedoms. Oh, how fragile. This ought to make you think. How fragile our freedoms really are. One of the founding fathers said this. I don't, I don't know exactly who said it. One of the fathers did. If we do not value our freedoms enough to preserve and fight for them, we don't deserve them. Now, a little document, it's back there in the vestibule. You, if you don't have one, I, I don't notice nobody much picked it up. There's a little document called the Bill of Rights. I dare, I'm not going to take a toll this morning, but it would be amazing how few people have ever read this document. This document was amended into our Constitution. This document guarantees guarantees the freedoms we claim to have. 
This document, that's just what it is, what it says. It was <clears throat> the amendment to the Constitution, and it, this document guarantees us five basic rights that no government has a right to take away from us. How any constitutional judge that knows the Constitution can justify what's been happening in taking away our freedoms during this crisis is absolutely ignorant of the law or he just doesn't care about the law. Amen. I'm not going to go through all, all of them, but there's some here you... Uh, <laughs> There's some here that's in especially danger this morning of us losing. Amendment number one, the five freedoms. Amendment number one, Congress shall make no law. No means no. Amen? Amen. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. You tell me that on my constitutional rights, they have a right to come in and tell us whether we can have church or not. They do not. They do not. Amen. Now they can suggest that we shut down for the sake of others. They can say we would recommend that you would do this for the health of people. They would say we would prefer that you do this. It's what you ought to do morally and I believe that. But they have no right for anything to shut down the churches in America. There it is. The second amendment. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. They have no right to tell me whether I can carry a gun or not carry a gun. They may not want me to. They may not like for me to. But constitutionally, they have no right to say I can't. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's unbelievable. You ought to get one, keep it somewhere, pick one up. Oh, listen, folks. When we lose or give up these freedoms that that has guaranteed us, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You're going to become nothing but a socialist state, and that's what they want us to be. Amen. But I say, my freedom is worth fighting for. Amen. Number two, not only are our freedoms worth fighting for but I'm very adamant on this our faith is worth fighting for Amen. 
1 Corinthians 16, 13. I, I want to get through this because, so before, try to stay within a time frame of not having this criticism going long. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, you can read it. Jude, only one chapter, verse 3, tells us that we are to stand and defend our faith. Right. Amen. Amen? Amen? That's what we're to do. Not only are my freedoms under attack, but our, listen to me this morning, our Christian faith is next in line because there are those who are attempting to turn America into a humanistic, atheistic, godless society. And you know it's true. Amen. They're trying to remove from every segment of our society any mention of God. They want to turn America where they, they say and claim America is no longer a Christian nation. I will fight to the end against that statement. Amen. America is a spiritual nation or should, was founded that way. I know, I know that we lose it. We, we've come to this place. I understand that. That's why I'm trying to preach this. Listen. Secularism and materialism has come to the place it's taking over spiritualism. Our nation is deteriorating into a cesspool of perversion and iniquity. Each passing day we're falling deeper and deeper into a moral darkness and a, a, a moral... Uh, uh, Perversion of sexual uh, impurity, homosexuality, same-sex same marriage, transgenderism. All types of filth and ungodliness can be seen today. You, you, do, you can prove it, just go home and turn on your TV, turn on the internet, and I guarantee you, you'll see things you never dreamed were going to be possible that you could see. Families are fragmented. Christians are mocked and ridiculed. The Bible is laughed at. Churches are deemed no longer essential. That's what they tell them to close them up. They're not essential. Well, from looking at most crowds, I'm not talking about the ones now that we're, we've gone through this. Most churches across America, many of them, If not almost empty, they're on the way to being almost empty. Our faith in Jesus Christ as the only Son of God, and, as, and we preach that He is absolutely and totally the only means of salvation, they despise that doctrine. And they're trying to shut us up. Politic Political correctness, hate speech, and all of this other garbage they're trying to use to silence God's people. Amen. And yet I find that few are willing to stand up, speak out, against all of this unrighteousness, all of this ungodliness, all of this filth. But folks, listen to me seriously. If we do not somehow stem the tide of this thing, we're going to lose the war Amen. culturally. Hey, I'm not against them. They're, they're, if they want to uh, 
be a homosexual. I'm not against that. And that's their choice. But bless God, I have a privilege to preach God's Word and what God says about it. Amen. Amen. And I have a right not to have that immoral lifestyle forced down my throat. Can I have an amen? amen? Our faith is worth fighting for. Amen. amen. I'm going to stand on it. Thirdly, I believe our families are worth fighting for. I'll try to hasten on here because you may have heard some of this before. But I want to tell you, the one thing Satan hates more than the church, he hates good, godly, Christian families. And so our homes and our families are being attacked today as never before. The divorce rate is soaring. Discipline is almost a thing of the past. The family circle, at least on this earth, is broken and shattered. Dr. John R. Rice said this in a message he preached, and this was preached probably 25 years ago. He says this, Lawlessness begins in the home. Child delinquency begins in the home. Children who are taught to respect honor and obey authority do not turn out to be criminals. Right. Listen to me, folks. It's from the home that comes our spiritual and political leaders. They have to come somewhere. They were a product of somebody's home somewhere. It's been said parents who laugh at the Bible may have influenced their children toward atheism. Parents who ridicule the moral teaching of the Bible may have pointed their children to a life of sin. Parents who fail to take their children to church regularly may have set the example that God is not important. Oh, listen, folks. As pastor, I, I, my heart breaks when I see what's happening to our homes in America. And a lot of good pastors feel the same way, whether you believe it or not. And it may seem like this cultural war of the home we're, we're losing. But I'm going to say this. I'm going to keep preaching. It's still worth fighting for. Amen. And lastly and quickly, follow me. Not only our freedoms, not only our faith, not only our families, but I believe our future is worth fighting for. Amen. Oh, listen, no matter how dark it gets, <laughs> no matter how discouraging it might look, may I say to you this morning as a Christian, don't give up. Amen. America is still worth fighting for. And there are still multitudes of thousands of godly, born-again Christian men and women who still believe the values on which this country was founded. Amen. And I say this this morning. There's still hope for a spiritual awakening in America. But I, I just don't know how to get it across. Yes, there's hope. I believe that.
I lose the power when I get away from this. But listen to me. There is hope. But the hope lies right here. Beginning right here to right out there. Come on now. If you do not believe America is worth fighting for, again, go to some place that you can believe is worth fighting for. I'm going to fight to the last dog falls. <laughs> Because I still believe it, that America has a future if God's people would just rise to the occasion. Amen. So I close where I began this morning. I love America. I'm proud to be an American. And I'm going to keep on fighting against those that are attempting to destroy America. I will never stop loving America. I will never stop praying for America. And I will never stop doing all that I can, which is not much, I know. But at least I'm doing it. Doing all I can to see her again become the nation that she was founded to be. Like our great president says, let us make America great again. But we've added a little phrase to that. Let us make America godly again. But it up, it's up to you and me. Let's stand together. If we will. If we lose this fight, I'm going to go down fight. I mean that. I believe America is worth saving. Amen. 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 I believe, I, listen, I believe the tide can be turned. But it's going to be God's people that do the turn. Only you, only you right now, before God, know whether or not God can count on you. Folks, we have got to get back to serving God, worshiping God, praying to God. We've got to get back Amen. to fighting for what we believe in. Amen. Amen. That's what I try to do as a pastor. I don't, I don't make apology about it. I don't know about you. Maybe there's a decision in your heart this morning. Maybe you like, maybe you, I don't know. I don't know. I was going to call the church up. I don't. I only do that about two or three times a year. I don't like to call church to prayer. I believe if, if God speaks to you to come to the altar, you ought to come. If you don't come, that's disobedience. I shouldn't have to stand up here and beg people to come to the altar. Maybe this morning, though, you have a need you need to take care of. Maybe this morning you were to make a decision about your church membership, your church home. 
Maybe you don't want to be a part of a church that stands like we stand. That's okay. Maybe this morning you're here and you're not saved. You, need, you know you need the Lord. You know that you're going to meet Him one day. And you just simply want to come this morning and say, Pastor, I want to take Jesus as my Savior. I don't know what it might be, but we're going to sing two verses. If no one is stirred, no one cares. Come on, Brother Jim. If no one cares, that's okay. I'm not going to quit. If everybody else doesn't bother them, that's okay. It bothers me that it bother, doesn't bother them, but I'm not going to quit because of it. But I want my people, I want Berean Baptist Church to get serious about serving Him, living for Him, witnessing for Him, I can't make you do it. I'm not, I'm not going to beg you to do it. If God cannot speak to your heart, nobody on the face of the, of the earth can do it. So we'll leave the decision open this morning. If you have a need, you have a burden, you have a decision. Here's the place. Here's the place. To take care of it. What number, brother? 325. Go ahead. 325? 325.